Um, I'm not going to ask everyone to answer each question. Uh, Jonathan, that last question is obviously aimed at you. Contract yeah. lasts for five years. Five, uh, five years are up, and Richard Desmond says, thank God all that ridiculous Leveson fuss is over. I'm, I'm off. I'm out of here. What are you doing? Uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, Lord Hunt quite said what it, uh, you said he did. Uh, what he was saying was he, if the, all newspapers didn't sign up, clearly the system wasn't workable and he would hand it over to Parliament for statutory regulation because that was the sword of Damocles hanging over them. That, that's what he said on that issue. I, I can't remember the, the other point you made, but it, it but wasn't sorry, quite right. Sorry, how, how do you respond? I mean, whatever Lord Hunt said, yeah. five years are up, uh, the whole Leveson uh, bandwagon has finished, moved on, um, and Desmond says, right, that fuss is over, I'm out of here. Well, I guess you've got to make sure that the system works so that people want to be within it, but firstly. Secondly, it's certainly not averse to Leveson providing incentives for people to want to be part of the system, and Lord Hunt did suggest during that evidence session that the Irish model might be something to look at in terms of the, the defamation law there. So. And the other final point, really, is that they're five-year rolling contracts, so there wouldn't, it wouldn't ever naturally come to an end. There'd have to be uh, a, a serious amount of notice given and a serious amount of but reorganisation. there'd be a, a point of renegotiation, a bit like your negotiation, renegotiating a lease. There would be a well, point it, it of... It would roll, put. naturally, but so, therefore, the onus would be on someone to leave the system if that's what they were choosing to do, in which case the crisis would obviously Without have to be addressed by the regulator and the industry and, all, right. and probably government and all sorts of interested parties. OK, OK. I, but, uh, OK. Um, Martin, um, the public... Um, uh, it, it, uh, you have a multiplicity of self-regulators, but you know, uh, Johnny, Fred Bloggs, it, it doesn't. It just wants to know where do I go? I've been done over by the Workington Times. I don't want a choice of 17 different regulators. I just want to. I just want to know where I go. Uh, isn't going to be confused. Is that a question? Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I've invented um. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, is, I mean, the first thing, the first thing, actually, to, to respond to Will, because I think the first, before you asked the question, you mentioned the, the issue of the public, which is, is is pretty central here, and I think actually is unusually central because I mentioned the uh, history of reform, and actually, if you look at the history of reform, most certainly the three royal commissions in Calcutt, um, very little civil and society involvement at all. It was mostly discussions between politicians and, and senior members of the press. Um, so this is already quite a distinct process, and I think. Um, uh, uh, just to reflect on what Nora O'Neill said towards the end of last year, which is that an awful lot of thought in the past has been given to, um, to the needs of the press and perhaps even the needs of the government, but not necessarily to the needs of the audience and the needs of the public. And I think, or at least I hope, that an awful lot more thought has been given to that this time. Um, I think to your question, which I'm, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether I should take Stephen's interpretation or my interpretation, or I was slightly confused, but I think, I think um, the first thing I should say is whilst there is, whilst there would be an obligation for large corporations, um, there would be no restriction in the sense that smaller organisations um, would be absolutely uh, capable and, and one would hope would be willing uh, to join, to participate. Um, uh, and indeed, as we've talked about already, uh, the problem has not been identified, particularly not at the regional level and not at, and not at small publications. So um, the... Uh, 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 the incentive would, one would hope would be for them to participate. Um, I'm going to stop you. Sorry, OK. Yeah, I mean, if, unless there's anything else you... Well, I, I, we can say. continue. I mean, All there's right, okay. quite more. But I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm, 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 I'm being eviled by, by Helen. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to give Max and Hugh the final word. Max, the, 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 the cost, first of all, but also Bill's point. Um, it's not just the footballer who wants to stop the story. It's the girl who feels hard done by who actually wants the story to be published. Right. Well, on, on the Shall cost. I deal with that old chestnut? <laughs> <laughs> you can, we can both do it. Go on. Well, uh, on the funding, uh, I would suggest a levy from every publication which has a circulation greater than 30,000. And the levy would be less than 1p per copy, probably actually about a tenth of a p. If you take the Sunday papers, the magazines, everything together, you get about 13 million publications a day. So whatever way you want to do the sums, if you ended up with a 1P, it'd be about 47 million a year, which would be an awful lot more than it would cost. It'd be somewhere well under 1P. 
So I don't think it would be any burden to anyone. I mean, good old Guardian put the price up from a pound to one pound 20 the other day, and I don't suppose they've lost a lot of sales as a result. A penny isn't going to hurt anybody, a fraction of a penny still less. The, um, the thing about the girl, uh, I think Hugh's probably the best one. To, it's, it's one of the sort of classic problems, but it already exists. So as far as I go, the only change would be, instead of it being discussed at huge expense in front of a high court judge, it would be discussed for free in front of a, an adjudicator. But Hugh, you want to take Hugh, that up? Hugh's the expert. I mean, the position is, uh, um, under the PCC code, uh, um, the story about the footballer and the lap dancer, or whatever it is, uh, would actually be in breach of the code. So, so it's, it, 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 the, the, the newspapers have already signed up to uh, 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 rules which stop that happening. I mean, in respect of the uh, freedom of expression rights uh, uh, of the girl, well, you know, there's endless discussions about that, uh, about that but, uh, I mean, uh, the two have to be balanced, but in... The, I mean, the very short answer is found in many cases. Uh, it's not a story about her, it's a story about him, because he's famous in Workington and she's not. Uh, and the balance comes down in her. Well, she probably wants it. In my experience, she would want it stopped as well. <laughs> OK, I, 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 this has got to carry on uh, at the reception over drinks, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm afraid and, uh, and delighted to say. So, 45-minute break. Um, 6.15, we're going to be back in here, but there, at the moment there is tea and coffee and biscuits in Fivey Hall, where you all were before. And please thank the panel. <laughs>